So we all know that EA can suck a bag of dicks, but let's see which dick in that bag is the biggest. Wow. Welcome back everyone, my name is Trip, and today we're making a tier list of the terrible things that EA does consistently. They weren't always like they are now. Back when Electronic Arts was founded by Trip Hawkins, he believed that every game was a work of art, which is how the company got its name. You see, Trip was a cool guy with a cooler name, but after he cut ties with the company back in 1994, EA has grown into the monetized shit show we all know and typically disagree with. But maybe they're not that bad. I mean, there's some good things they've done recently. They have a world record on Reddit for the most downvoted comment ever. So cool. And back in 2012, they won an award for the worst company in America, twice. But the poll was held on a now defunct website, so it's not really an official title anymore. But still, over a quarter million people voted for him, so it's kind of legit. But anyways, for this tier list, S tier means this is the worst thing ever, no company should ever do this. And D tier is, meh, it's not that bad, you know, other companies do worse. And we're gonna be ranking their habits. Things they do a lot, or have done a lot. But really quick before we get the video started, two second ad, download ExpressVPN from our link below for a better life online. Download ExpressVPN from our link below or I'll find where you live. I'm not gonna find where you live, don't worry. Um. First up, we're gonna look at some of their marketing and PR strategies, because I personally find these to be quite comical. So a huge amount of EA's budget goes into marketing, over $700 million in 2019 alone. But it's not just billboards and commercials that they're up to, because they've partaken in some shady strategies. I think my favorite campaign they ran was when they hired a bunch of actors to act like God-fearing Christians and had them stand out of E3 boycotting Dante's Inferno in order to, I don't know, like gain attention from the controversy, I guess, or something. I just think it's funny to look at these signs and think how a marketing team in an EA office made them and not these supposed protesters. And you can really tell because they they did a good job making sure they slapped their logo all over them. They also handle some of their PR issues with the grace of a donkey. Remember when I said they were voted America's worst company? Well, they tried to divert that negative press by creating some fake anti-gay campaign against them. Basically what they did was they said they were being attacked by an anti-gay group about the same-sex content in their games. Then they claimed that some other pro-gay website started a petition to support EA and was cheering them on to not give in to the pressure from the oppressive group. But neither group claims to have ever come into contact with EA. Who the hell, who the hell's in charge of coming up with these ideas? How does this person still have a job? But just because they're stupid ideas doesn't make them the worst thing ever to do. I'm gonna rate this like a D, meh. Other companies do worse, so it's not a problem. So now that we know they're spending a bunch of money on whatever dumb shit idea they think is a good idea, I'm sure their super rich company is a great place to work. Well, maybe, but actually, no. A spouse of an EA employee wrote a viral post a couple years back about her husband working 12 hour days, seven days a week, with no overtime pay or vacation time. However, this was a while ago, and it appears things have gotten better, with most employees reporting crunch times of only about 70 hours a week, um, which still sucks, that's 30 hours more than your work week should be. So, what the hell, guys? And because I think it's such an awful thing to do this to the people that slave away making your games, we're gonna rank this one a um, nice fat S tier. So, they force their employees to work crazy hours. The games should all be stellar quality, right? Well, no, not really, again. Almost every game they come out with these days is the same game as it was last year. FIFA, other sports games that aren't FIFA, with a few minor tweaks. Like, I don't get how they're still releasing a new Need for Speed every year. I mean, they're remastering remakes of old games, so they've sold the same game on three different occasions. Okay, cool. Other games like Anthem that aren't a copy and pasted title were supposed to be new exciting IPs for EA. But still, they released with really bad quality. But a lot of game companies do this, so I'm only gonna give them a C tier. It's not the end of the world. But still, try a little harder. Fuck, that's your job. 
but maybe some of the blame is on the studios that are actually making the game. Well, no, not really, because the next habit they have is forcing games out onto the market to meet their deadlines. I remember first logging into Battlefield 5 and seeing coming soon on multiple content sections, which is weird, like why are you doing this and why didn't you just finish it in the first place? Oh, that's because the game is now a service. That's right. <sighs> I hate it that release dates are no longer release dates, but instead they're the date that you can now buy it. The rest will come later. Maybe. Because everything that's missing or uh, wrong can just be patched later, right? That's a very greedy, toxic mindset, and the results of which are found in almost every one of their games. And because of this nonsense, the standard of quality for the entire industry is lowered. So this habit receives an A tier for asshole rank. Another way EA loves to spend its precious money is acquiring other gaming studios and either ruining or closing them, which is a bad habit. I don't want to run through the whole list of studios that EA brought down and closed shortly after. It's, it's kind of a lot, so I guess I'll just put them on screen. Some notable ones are uh, Maxis, the creators of early gaming hits like SimCity, and they also closed down Black Box Games, which is the creators of one of my personal favorite games, Skate 3. Aside from closing them, they also seem to just flat out ruin the studios they are running. Like how they spent $775 million on acquiring Bioware. At first it seemed great by getting Mass Effect and Dragon Age, which are some great games, However, it seems the wear and tear that EA prescribed has taken its toll, as their last couple games were, uh, you know, Mass Effect, Andromeda, and Anthem. You know, they're not, well, they're not very good, to be honest. And because I think a lot of these studios could have done better off on their own as indie developers, this is an S for supertastic shitty thing to do as a company, tier habit. <sighs> Okay, let's now talk about monetization, woo, yeah. You knew it was gonna be in the video. Simply put, they're really good at this. They find a way to nickel and dime most of their experiences as much as possible. The reason I'm mad about this is because, again, their actions affect gaming as a whole. Other companies see what they're doing and think, hey, why the hell not? So because EA couldn't keep their dicks in their wallets, microtransactions are becoming more of the norm than they previously were. They do this so aggressively that even Disney lashed out at EA. They were pissed at them for damaging the Star Wars brand after the whole Battlefront 2 loot box debacle. So now in most of their games, it's either waste hours and hours of your life for one small thing, or just get your credit card out. Loot boxes. Fucking awesome, right? So yeah, that's now three S-tier bad habits which just so happens to be the same amount of best friends Ego now has, hell yeah! Thank you for patronizing us, guys! Let's talk about multiplayer. I think it's pretty cool, a lot of fun, you know? What isn't cool is when a game that can be played single player needs internet. Why are you spying on me? What, do you, what the hell do you want from me playing SimCity? But I guess internet's pretty much everywhere these days, so it's not like the worst thing, right? But it's still a B-tier habit, like, I don't like that at all. But I saved my personal least favorite for last, and that is the monopolization of sports games. It used to be that other studios and publishers could get the rights to leagues like the NFL and the NBA, etc. But these days, if a sports game is dropping, it's from EA, since they hold sole ownership rights of most professional leagues. And because of this, they have no competition, meaning they have no incentive to make better games. Cool. I know, right? No, I'm not quite sure how this is legal, so I'll just say that EA bribed them. They, they didn't, but if I say that, then somebody's just gonna correct me in the comments and we'll all know. You're welcome. So yeah, that's a lot of shitty habits, but how do I feel about EA? Well, I think they should give me keys to some of their new games, like EA, give me some free shit, maybe I won't be so mad at you guys. Until they decide to change, which they won't, they're pretty much just the Galactic Empire from Star Wars, but like a little more evil, probably less organized. But that's the video, bye, check out our second channel, it's really cool, we might even do live streams on it. Thanks for watching.